All right, well, let's start um, dividing these out. We talked a little bit about um, the different lobes of the brain. We also looked at briefly at the two different cortices or cortexes, motor and sensory. And so it makes sense to start with the one that has to do with input first. And input um, is always uh, the sensory cortex. It is the interface uh, between uh, the senses and the, and the brain. And so it processes uh, incoming information. And that's the key here. It, it acts as um, the uh, incoming information. It, it acts as the interface between the senses and the brain and, um, and obviously the output for the information or for the um, uh, behavior itself. Now again, uh, uh, and I've mentioned this briefly, the key here is always uh, more precise control always requires more uh, brain power or brain uh, act, uh, brain uh, area, okay? So more precision uh, leads to uh, greater um, uh, cor cortical area. And that's generally the case. Um, now let me let me point some a couple of different things out for you. Um, first of all, the the hemispheres cross or the information crosses, I should say. So there is actually a, a, a hemispheric, section for the left and right hemispheres. This is that area here. And so uh, what I want you to pay attention to is think about the most sensitive parts of our body and that which needs the greatest amount of precision. Well, our eyes, our nose, our face, lips. Lips are extremely sensitive. Tongue is as well. And you can detect these by just pressing in on different parts of your body just with a fingernail. And you'll notice you're not going to do that to your eye, uh, partly because of the sensitivity of it. So um, the, the more, greater the precision that's needed, the more cortical area is devoted to it, which makes uh, a lot of sense when you think about it. So the cortical area uh, that we're talking about here um, is, is taking in the information passing it on through these uh, areas. These arrows down here d d are the information coming from the, the various senses um, and touch, smell, um, uh, taste, movement, all of those are, are impacted by the sensory cortex itself. It is the interface between each of these areas and uh, manages each. Now the other thing to keep in mind in looking at this diagram is the word homunculus uh, and uh, what you uh, are seeing and you'll see in the motor cortex as well is what is often referred to as the little man. And two researchers who were responsible in this area were one by the name of Forrester and the other Penfield, who uh, basically mapped out in live patients uh, the uh, areas of the brain. And um, they, they used it simply by stimulating various parts of the brain. And <clears throat> I would refer you to a video that's on our website uh, called Mapping the Brain, and it actually shows you um, how brain surgery is done um, and uh, what kind of mapping goes into the, an MRI is used, uh, the, um, the uh, fMRI is also used to map the portions of the brain that they will then go operate on uh, and where, what to avoid. And so uh, MRI has become an extremely powerful tool to map the brain and for brain surgery to be done at an extremely high level of precision 
um, and this particular video is on on the website. You can actually watch it, um, and you can see how they do it. Uh, they it shows you an example of the stimulation of the brain uh, just to confirm, in fact, uh, that uh, they've mapped the brain accurately. Um, the brain doesn't have pain receptors in it, so therefore, uh, outside of the uh, drill that goes through the skull, uh, outside of that, there is very little pain, and so uh, stimulation of the brain can proceed, um, and the patient can be wide awake when they go about uh, stimulating various parts of the brain. I will tell you that from experience, um, I actually had, it wasn't brain surgery, but I had something called neurostimulators placed underneath my scalp. And as they were doing that, they had to use um, a particular kind of anesthesia that would allow me to stay awake so that once they placed the neurostimulators under my scalp and turned them on, I was able to actually tell them if it was in the right area or not. It, it was really kind of cool for me, uh, but uh, probably watching it uh, wasn't nearly as, as cool. So uh, you, I, I would encourage you to take a look at this particular uh, video on the website because you can actually see how they go about mapping the brain prior to brain surgery. All right, so we move from input, um, input, which is the equivalent of um, the sensory cortex and the interface between it and the um, brain itself to output. And the output uh, comes from the motor cortex. Um, and we're really basically focusing on this aspect on behavior, outward behavior, generally speaking. But again, same principles apply here. Um, greater precision, <clears throat> greater cortical area, area. And again, as I pointed out when we were looking at the sensory cortex, again, the, the, the control of facial features, for example, is very much uh, got a, a huge amount of cortical area devoted to it. The eyebrows, the eyes, the neck, the facial features, the facial muscles are all very much connected to uh, this area. So uh, the research that has been done, and I think is, is probably even more fascinating, is some of the research that's being done around uh, computer-controlled motor functions um, and uh, the example is given in your book of monkeys actually um, <clears throat> uh, learning how to move a prosthetic arm just by thinking um, motor function. And w as our computers get more and more powerful, uh, the, the more we can actually map what goes on in these motor neurons um, to uh, mimic them or send signals to them um, to be able to mimic thought that then leads to action. Um, again, same researchers, Forster and Penfield, uh, and they they were again instrumental in mapping these particular areas of the brain. Um, the uh, other thing I would point out, or kind of uh, obliquely refer to it as, is is how close we actually are. Um, there is, a, uh, and of course I'm doing these in the midst of the 2012 London Olympics, and there's a runner. Uh, from South Africa by the name of uh, Oscar Pistorius. And he really essentially has uh, uh, cr uh, created history or, or had a historical event because he, he runs, he has a birth defect that his legs had to be amputated but below the knee, so he has no calf muscles. And so he, he, uh, off, he's referred to as the blade runner 
and um, to date, currently, what I'm watching, he has made it into the semifinals of the 400 meter, which is really quite remarkable. Uh, he had to appeal to the arbitration board to be able to um, uh, run against able-bodied uh, runners. He had multiple medals in the uh, Paralympics, and uh, a lot of debate is going on about um, uh, about his uh, if he has uh, um, got an advantage because the lower section of his leg the carbon fiber, they use carbon fiber to replace his calves, basically, and they're blades that um, he, he really can't stand on very long. It's really meant for running. And the question is, is, is um, does he tire as quickly as world-class athletes or elite athletes? The answer is yes. Uh, but at the same time, uh, he doesn't have to swing as heavy of a leg as the rest of the runners do. But uh, he, we will be watching history while we watch him um, compete against able-bodied, um, uh, able-bodied runners. The the next step, if you will, beyond this is actually being able to uh, uh, have com- computer-controlled um, computer-controlled limbs that are mapping or have mapped functions. On the, on the brain, and it gives you an idea of what this interface actually is doing. Our capacity to mimic the motor cortex uh, is, we're getting better and better at it because of the power of our computers. Uh, but the motor cortex is the output um, to uh, the input from the uh, sensory cortex. And it, it um, mimics the functioning as uh, as it does in the sensory. So what you do if you were to place these two side by side, you would see that the same areas are um, wired for the same areas of the brain. And again, we go back to uh, the same um, uh, principle that is key to understand how uh, neurons fire and I'll say say the issue again. Those that fire together, and you should be able to um, finish this statement, wire together. And this is very powerfully um, illustrated in how the motor cortex and the sensory cortex are right side by side.